We typically think of wheels as disc-shaped objects attached to cars and bicycles. A wheel is actually any circular object that turns around a center point. A wheel can be spherical, like a ball, or cylindrical, like a pipe. Wheels have been around for nearly 6,000 years. Ancient Egyptians used tree trunks as cylindrical wheels to reduce the friction between the stone block and the ground to build pyramids. A wheel by itself is actually not a simple machine because no force is transferred by rotating the wheel. Instead, a rotating wheel can make work easier by reducing friction between objects. The focus question of this lesson is how do wheels help to overcome friction? In Activity 5, students discover how wheels reduce friction. This activity will take about 40 minutes. The vocabulary introduced in this activity is roller, wheel. The materials for each group of students that you will need to get would be a half brick, six dowels, a plastic ring, string, the push-pull meter, and a transparency found in a white envelope in the kit. The half bricks are packaged in a box all by themselves. They come separately. You would also need a globe or a map of the world. And you would provide a pair of scissors and make copies of activity sheet five for every student. You may wish to try the string around the half brick ahead of time. You'll need to cut about a one meter length of string and tie it like a package around the brick. The students will be pulling the brick, so you'll want to leave a little bit of the string in this direction and then just simply cut it like this. Project the Egyptian pyramid on the overhead and explain that Egyptians built the pyramids over 5,000 years ago. Locate Egypt on a globe or a map. Each block of stone had to be moved. Some weighed more than 20 tons. Pyramids were built without trucks, cranes, forklifts, or other heavy machinery. Ask the students how they think the Egyptians moved the stones. Then distribute Activity Worksheet 5 and call attention to the drawings and ask, how could these workers have made it easier to move this stone? Then invite the students to record their thoughts and questions on the worksheet. For this activity, the students will be working in groups of four. You will distribute the half brick that has been tied with the string. The students will be pulling this brick across the table or the floor. One of the suggestions might be to tape two pieces of paper together so that the students will not damage the uh, surface of the table with the brick. The other thing is, because the table might move, and that would be an additional variable, is to let's just tape down the paper so it won't move. So Kathy, pull the brick across the paper and what do you observe? Okay. Well, you know, it's not too hard, but it's just, you know, it could be easier. Mm -hmm. It takes a little bit of force to, to uh, pull the brick. And so uh, how could we measure that force? Well, the students last time have been using the push-pull meter to be able to measure how much force it takes to move something. So let's see if we can use the push-pull meter to measure the amount of force it takes to pull this brick. Okay, this may be a little bit difficult to get this ring that we have attached to the push-pull meter. Uh, so why don't we make a little invention or something and make a lead string that will be attached to the brick so that the students can more easily uh, get the string attached to the um, ring. Well, if you'll cut a piece of string about 12 inches long, uh, this might be something that the students can do or the teacher can do. Um, do just a little knot at the end, and then you've got a little loop of string. 
take that loop mm -hmm. and run it through. Again, the students will definitely be able to do this part. Get that loop through the string, and then you've got that big hole. All they have to do is pull that through and then pull it tight. Now they still have a loop right here. They can attach the uh, ring to. Okay, let's go ahead and get that set up. So we're going to attach it to the ring. And then we're ready to try our push-pull meter. Okay, so what we're measuring here is how many units of force does it take to pull the brick across the table, okay, or across the paper. All right, I'm going to use my ruler so that I can uh, get an accurate reading. Go ahead and start pushing. I'm going to try to pull it okay. as evenly as I can yeah, so that we get a pretty accurate measurement without stopping. Okay, looks like it's about six units. Okay. And the teacher's going to ask the students, how could we reduce the amount of force it takes to overcome the friction that causes the brick to move slowly? What do you think the kids are going to say? Oh, I, th I think they might have several ideas, but because we've used the motion lotion and one of the others to get this, the washers to slide, I'm thinking they might suggest using motion lotion. Well, do you think that the Egyptians used lubrication as they pulled the large building stones up to place them in the pyramid? I think that would take a lot of motion lotion. You know, that probably would not be too practical. So. What we're going to do is we're going to uh, ask the students to give us some ideas. Six wooden dowels will be handed to each group of four, and the students are directed to place the dowels under the brick about an inch apart, and students are asked, Kathy, what do you think that the, how do you think that the dowels will affect the amount of force needed to move the brick? So... Okay, what do you think is going to happen? I think anything could be easier than dragging that across the paper. So okay. I'm thinking it's going to be easier to do this. All right, let's see. Oh, yes, that is much easier. Wow. Oops. Okay, it's easier, but what we really need to do is measure the difference. And this is what the students are going to be asked to do. They're going to be asked to replace the dowels about an inch apart. And then... We're going to use the push-pull meter, and we're going to reattach the ring. To the push-pull meter so that we can measure the force. It was six units of force last time. So I'm going to put the ring right in the center so that, that way I get a good okay. pull. Get my in. ruler ready here to measure. Okay, it was a little jerky there, but it really was a lot easier. It was about two and a half units that time okay. to pull the brick across the dowels. Okay? And the students discover that it does take much less force to roll the brick on the dowels. Define roller as a tube-shaped wheel. Ask the students to define a wheel which is any circular object that spins around on the center or axis. Ancient Egyptians made rollers from tree trunks. Wheels reduce the friction between the object and the surface over which it passes. Less force is needed. Later, the students are invited to put the dowels on the floor and move the brick one meter. Kathy, let's see what that would look like. Okay, so just imagine this is one meter. Oh, dear. Okay, keep pulling. Okay, remember last time. Let's not oh. let it hop off. Good job. What a challenge. But they discovered that one drawback is that as the object passes over the rollers, the rollers must be moved to the front again. For cleanup, you want to collect the bricks, push-pull meters, dowels, and a roll of string and return them along with the transparency to the kit.